Jameer Gibbs. Dan Campbell came out and, and talked about it and you know, talked to the media. They asked him about Jameer Gibbs, and his response was, well, we want to get him more involved. And I, I believe the quote was specifically, uh, we just wanted to go out there and allow him just kind of get, get the hang of the NFL, right? And he got like seven carries. It didn't have the amount of touches that we expect uh, moving forward because even in a short sample size, Jameer looked dynamic. And there were some times there where, especially where he – you know, pause, but laid the wood uh, on one of those hits and, and put his head down and, and took it. Uh, pause again. But still, Jameer, that was a surprise to me because uh, Jameer's up, a guy, at least from what I've seen at Alabama and seen at Georgia Tech, is he's going to make you miss. Um, he's much faster than everybody, but he's playing. He was looking like a little like David Montgomery out there at times. So I think there's a lot more to Jameer that we haven't seen yet. And hopefully in the passing game, we see a lot more of him because I think that's where he's going to thrive, especially without Jamo the first, you know, next five games. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, Jameer Gibbs, if you look at the numbers, if you look at what he did during that game, he had seven carries and averaged six yards per carry. And he had two receptions and averaged nine yards per catch. He touched the ball nine times and gained 60 yards, which is almost seven yards per touch, which is excellent. I'm not saying he would have gotten that if he would have got 21 carries like David Montgomery, but still, that is a clear and present sign that Jameer Gibbs needs more touches in the next games going forward because quiet is kept. The Lions' offense didn't, I mean, it wasn't bad by any means, but I would say that the Lions' defense was actually the star of the game. No doubt. The last, I mean, of, of the opening night game. I mean, they only gave up 20 points, and... They scored seven of their own with that Brian Branch pick six, while the offense only scored 14. And I'm not... J Jameer Gibbs gives this offense an element that David Montgomery just doesn't. Jameer Gibbs is, is explosive. But what also Jameer Gibbs showed is when he gets the ball in the open field and shows his shiftiness, he will also put his head down and get the extra yards, which is something that I was kind of shocked about. I think it made all of us in the room just gasp, like, oh my goodness, Jameer Gibbs is coming. He is him. So yes, I would love to see Jameer Gibbs get more involved. I want to see at least 15 touches in the next game. Is that fair? Is that a fair number? Yeah, 15? That's, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, you think about the, the rushing total. Total, like seven carries for 42 yards. You'd, you'd want them to get a, more carries, maybe a couple more carries. Yeah. But I don't think they're far off on the carries, Lucas. I don't think it's – I think where they're far off on it, and obviously they'll, they're planning on using them that way, uh, would be the, the receptions. Like he only got targeted twice, caught both passes for 18 yards. He's got to get more involved to me in the passing game. I mean, you'd like to see him get him more more involved, especially early on in the season, but I have no problem with how they use him week no, one. No, I don't Because it's pres you're preserving him later on. When you have a guy like David Montgomery, who especially early on was getting chunk yardage from the line of scrimmage and keeping them ahead of the chains, and towards the back half and the second half, they stopped getting away from the uh, – they got away from the run game. So that's why David Montgomery's yards per carry stopped because he was getting it probably – well, he couldn't really get in a rhythm in that second half towards the end. And Jameer Gibbs, he brings you back that speed element where he can get you that – it was like second and long. Put you in third and manageable, just like that. So I, I didn't mind how they use him. They are obviously going to use him more, but especially the fact that we didn't use him that much and we still beat the Kansas City Chiefs. So that should give you more hope about the offense as well because to Flannel's point, the offense giving up a, a fumble in the red zone, that sucks too. There was a couple of times where fourth and two didn't get it. That sucks. So this offense as a whole can play better, but I was still happy from what I saw because they still beat the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. That's what's crazy to think about is like how bad the offense looked. Like, and not not just entirely. I mean, you score 14 points, mm -hmm. which, you know, wouldn't be enough six out of seven. You know, if you play the Chiefs 10 times and you score 14 points, you're probably only beating them once. And they did that. Because the defense scored. The defense, Brian Branch, the That's rookie what, scored. When you guys so, were talking about Jalen Carter, it's like, yeah, Jalen Carter would be nice, but having Sam Laporta, Brian Branch, we would not have won that game against the Kansas City Chiefs. So that's where it's just like, yeah, could have Jalen Carter, but you also have those two studs in the second round that you're able to go and get. Yeah, that, and, that, and that's why I don't – I'm happy with what the Lions did. I want to make that clear. Like, even though I was simping for Jalen Carter – pre-draft, I, I still understand why they took Jameer, and I'm excited, man. I think Jameer Gibbs, even in the small sample size we saw, I know they gave majority of the carries to David Montgomery, but Jameer Gibbs, he showed a lot of flashes against a pretty good defense, and a well-coached defense, too. And you, now you're facing a defense this week, which you know, gave up 100 yards to two nobodies. I mean, I'm just going to say 2-2 at right? well. Like, 2-2 at well. He's precious. Or Puka, no. my bad, not Puka? Precious. Puka. Puka? <laughs> Puka? Uh, <laughs> no. Like, it, it, so I, I think their offense is, is due for a bounce-back performance this upcoming week against the Seahawks, but well, we shall see. No. It, it's the up and down in, this, in the NFL, man. The Seahawks looked like that week one. Week two, they're going to be a different team.
They just I, are. But so with the Lions. Yeah, and I would certainly agree that the that the Lions offense is due for a bounce back, certainly against the Seattle Seahawks team that is limping into the game, and we'll get to more of that later. And I see I see a lot a, a little bit of discussion in the chat about how using Jameer Gibbs like spa- I mean I wouldn't say sparingly, but only giving him nine touches in Week One was by design, just kind of easing him in, not trying to wear him down so early. But can we all agree that at some point this season, if you're going to draft a running back number 12 overall, you got to get him more than nine touches a game? Well, yeah, and I think they absolutely do final. But to your point, like, they're going to be doing that later on the season. This keeps him healthy for that because Mm -hmm. if you just keep feeding him the rock, feeding him the rock by week 15, 16, 17, he's going to be pretty beat up at that point. Now you're going to have Jameer Gibbs. If they keep doing this, I'm really not going to have any issue with it because come playoff time, Jameer Gibbs is going to be fresh. And David Montgomery... He's a he's a workhorse back. He's a back that takes some time to get going, and once that happens, he wears down the defense, and that's when you put in Jameer Gibbs. That's what you're drafting him to do. You're not drafting him for to be a Hall of Fame All Pro rookie. Like you're drafting him so when he hits his prime in year three, four, five, Jameer Gibbs is healthy. Right. He's doing everything that you did. So then, boy, when David Montgomery's gone, you have your RB one of the future, and before then, you have an absolute elite weapon that you can use at your disposal and keep him healthy and fresh. I think that's the key to all of this. Maybe that's the partially to the Lions learning from what they did with DeAndre. Like DeAndre, week one of last year, what do you have like 15 carries for a buck 44 against yeah. the Eagles, and then after that, it was just, it was just down downhill health wise, performance wise. And now they're probably thinking, you know what? Let's let's ease this man along. That's fair. Let's not, you know, throw everything at the it's wall week one here and give him 15 carries. So, you know, maybe I, I don't expect him to be a 15 carry guy consistently, but still, it, you know, I'm not worried. Like Lucas said earlier, I'm cool with how they're using him, um, and the fact that they used him the way they used him, put a leash on him, and they still beat the Chiefs. I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, at, the, at least at this point, yeah. Now, didn't play their best football. Still won the football game. Yeah, they on won the road. They won the game, and that is the most important thing of all. And it wouldn't, and ultimately, it wouldn't matter who got the touches, who scored, who made the defensive plays. All that matters is that the Detroit Lions are one and zero going into a home game against Seattle, which looks a lot more winnable than I would say even it looked just a couple of at like about twelve to eighteen hours ago or so. So that's that's all good news. I just hope that Jameer Gibbs, what we saw in a small sample size, I really liked. I really think there's a lot of promise with him. Him with like how he just made dynamic plays. It seems like every time he touched the football, something really, really good happened. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, every time someone touches something, something good happens. Matt Broder, man, this guy's mm-hmm. cooking. Uh, and now there's a Woodward and Main show coming out now. Matt Broder, Uncle T, Gabby D. Phillips. Like, look at this guy, dude. I mean, the guy. Get-